Welcome back guys. We have another episode today. Um, so it wouldn't be drift week if there wasn't problems. So I was going to yesterday I was going to do a video uh, getting a, the car prepared. We've got a private event coming up in six days at Chihuahua Park. So I had to do some stuff with the car. Um, it was pretty clean cut um, of, of what all I was going to do, had to do, and then I was going to go ahead and have my stuff ready to go today, which is six days in advance, where the only thing that I would have to do was is hook up to the trailer and leave. So, <clears throat> reason why I say it wouldn't be drift week without problems, because usually, typically, always, drift week it's always been a tradition, unfortunately, for everything to just start flying apart at the last minute. So, I guess it's time to knuckle down. I'll show you guys uh, a few things that I did with the car. Um, it's not anything big and exciting, but just stuff to patch it up. Um, other than playing in the yard and stuff, the car uh, has just been sitting stagnant. Um, but plans for the future um, is to get back out and start driving some more i've got some ideas i got some plans and things uh be bringing you guys some more drifting content but so with the car <laughs> it sat in the yard for a little while pulled it out of the garage it's been sitting out i was trying to exterminate my massive ant nest which i didn't find until yesterday i'm gonna clean it up and get all this stuff cleared out of it because I mean, it looks like I've been playing in a field or grass. Um, and I did have a small leak on the radiator uh, where the welds was down there for the brackets that were originally made on it when we put the car together. Um, I guess the vibrations had kind of cracked one. I passed it up. Unfortunately, I had to use like JB Weld because I do not have equipment to weld aluminum and we're six days out so <clears throat> the whole process of getting somebody to, to weld that radiator taking it out um, that would probably it, it don't take that long but it's just like waiting all the time everybody knows that everybody's busy right now so I'm not complaining about any of that but you know it probably take three or four days turn around and get the radiator back uh, due to work schedules and people being busy if I could get somebody to do it on such short notice so for right now jb welded it up we'll pack that in there i had a little bit on there before it still seeped some not real bad but i repacked it in uh heated it with a torch got it to set and settle so right now i'm gonna <clears throat> get everything filled up get the coolant system uh bled and get it all back in order um change the oil in it i had a problem with the oil uh the oil filter itself so originally I was using a K&N filter, and the K&N filter that I was using, I guess that they had revised it. Um, the inside of it, where it screws on, had kind of become concave. They pushed it back down in there a little bit more, so it wouldn't, it didn't have uh, the, the snout or whatever you want to call it that it screws onto, wasn't long enough, so you couldn't get it to seat. So I f did some cross-reference and found a uh, Wix filter that is supposed to be the cross-reference replacement for that so fortunately new oil filter um, about I don't know maybe six quarts of oil get her topped off all brand new so right now I'm in the process but when I get done with everything else to bleed the coolant system but I'm gonna talk to you real quick about the truck if you guys seen in the past videos me going out to Oklahoma uh, was supposed to be going to UTV takeover and unfortunately broke down had to ride back in a tow truck and that one was pretty expensive that was an expensive ride I uh, don't know if I mentioned before it was about $2,500 to get me back which I was not happy about but it was my only alternative now I'll show you this and show you what went wrong and what happened and what's going on now. So, the torque converter 
rip the bolts out of this. Um, <clears throat> it's, uh, as you can see, the holes, like that one's pretty tore up, pretty bad, put in sunlight. You can see how bad that is. Now it's rusty and stuff because it's been outside, uh, left it in the back of the truck. I actually chose to keep this because this was my $2,500 part. So, the people that built the transmission, um, uh, it was under warranty and everything. They came and got the truck. Uh, I got back home on Friday. They came and got the truck on a Monday. They agreed to warranty it out. It took them about a week and a half, two weeks. Um, they said they replaced everything. They replaced all the parts. And... So I drove it from there to my house and then from my house three days later to Windrock and back. We went riding and it was storming last weekend, which makes for beautiful sights and challenges and stuff when it's raining up there. So <clears throat> I made it back home and the truck sat parked ever since. Now, a, I went to go start it yesterday and drive it out because I've got some tires that I gotta mount for drift week and I had somebody pop up and say they could get them mounted for me today and kind of excited about trying these out the Accelera um, what are the names on these Accelera 651 extra uh, I wanted a lower tread wear rating on these <clears throat> they're only they are a 100 tread wear rating so we're gonna see if my axle survive and how long the tires last i don't expect them to last very long i got six tires um maybe kind of hold the ham a little bit while i'm drifting um but so i'm going to show you guys what's going on with the truck uh you know i hopped in it hadn't drove it in a week actually six days and then as soon as i hopped in the truck let it warm up Got in to pull up into the driveway, to back into the backyard, to go get my other wheels, and noticed that the transmission was acting funny. So I hopped out and decided to check the fluid. There was no fluid on the dipstick. And then I looked down and noticed that there's a big pool and puddle of transmission fluid underneath the transmission. And I was like, you know what the hell? So later last night, I climbed up and under the transmission and I'll show you guys exactly what I found and I'm not very happy about it. Now, for quick reference measure, I may be able to get a quick fix just to get me from my side of town to the back side of Knoxville for this drift event and then regroup and game plan unless I can find a, new, uh, a different truck to use for a day or two days so I can just make the drift event and back. Now, normally, I would be acceptable to drive the car but the problem with the car is I'd have to renew the insurance on it, which is going to cost me extra money. It's not a whole lot, but I just don't want to spend that. I'd have to get the tags renewed, which is, you know, that's not that big of a deal. But I'd have to find me a new head or a new tail light and then make it fit. As you can see, I run walls and smash into stuff and whatever, and I haven't replaced the tail light. I feel like one tail light's sufficient enough. It doesn't have turn signals, but you know that's what hand signals are for. That's legal in Tennessee. A lot of people just don't know. So I'd have to come up with that, but tail lights you have to buy them in a set, and they're they're kind of pricey and just not really what I want to spend my money on at the time, at this very moment. I could go get me some cheap janky trailer setup lights. But then I have to pay, you know, for the tags. I don't drive the car around, so I have to pay those sharks their money. And then insurance, which I have to pay for at least minimum of a month, which I'm not going to drive it every single day or whatnot. So that's my my predicament my dilemma i probably will be able to find a truck or something just to get me towed to the other side uh to load my stuff up because I, I plan on taking a bunch of stuff to um fortunately get to this event 
you know this will be one of two that I plan on running this year but the second one will be out of the question uh, if I don't get the truck fixed so I'm gonna start working I've got to do the brakes and stuff on this <laughs> this adds more to the whole drift week thing just yeah so I'll give you guys some clips and show you what I found up under the truck and you guys tell me in the comments what you think and what you would do if you found that got the coolant system filled up with your basic uh, special pH balance water hose with water we'll let it bleed for a little bit let it get warmed up it takes a minute to warm up we'll test it out let it do its thing it's got a little janky swirl pot set up here it works for now I got a different one that I'm gonna put in. Got the pads off on the Kia, getting it worked on. Get some new brakes, get it good to go. It's weird how the how they do the brake pads. It's different. I guess it works. Got these little uh, spring pieces that keep them pushed apart, which makes sense. That helps with keep them from one getting stuck. Not a bad job take 14 millimeters on these and then it just slides back off. I guess it helps that it's a newer car. So, I'm finish bleeding the system on this thing. Try to get it out of the driveway. So I pull my truck up and show you guys what's going on with it. We gotta run and go get brakes, brake pads and stuff for this real quick. Now it's time to show you what's up with old red here. What's going on? Key is done. Went ahead and did the rear brakes on it too. So I'm gonna climb up and under here, show you guys what's going on, what I found. <clears throat> yeah, let's see if we can get a temporary fix. So the leak that I found last night is coming from that right there. So if you can see that, there's a little leak. I'm not going to start it up because it starts puking it out pretty bad. But another thing that I found that I'm not happy about is that right there. That's a pretty good size hole. So I'm going to get it cleaned up and get some pictures and videos of it and go from there. So I cleaned it up a little bit and show it to you. You see that really big hole? Like that's that's from the transmission when it went boom, I'm assuming. What's kind of got me pissed off is, is it's, it's, I don't know, it's kind of shitty. You promise this warranty work to replace and take care of everything. And you get left with that. So, it's not cool. Let's we'll see, see what happens, see what we can do to get this thing all fixed up and taken care of. But right now, I'm not really happy about it. So wiggle my way out and got this line out. Turns out that this one was the one that goes to the trans cooler in the front. Now I have put an aftermarket trans cooler on here so it's a little bit easier. Um, the way I have the lines underneath it kind of have some barb fittings. They come apart in two instead of being one complete. So O'Reilly's, I check with them. They have this line um, or they will have it tomorrow so I won't be able to finish all this tonight. Hopefully that's the only issue that I experience. I can get this back on the road and have it good to go for the event. So America car, I've got it all settled out. I think I just need to wash it and clean it and everything. But anyways, that'll be the end of this little episode. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, hit subscribe, hit the like button, um, drop us a comment. What you think about this? It's kind of a shitty predicament, but you know, uh, merchandise link below if you want to support the channel but anyways thanks guys thanks for watching we are t-minus six days or less from drifting at chill alley park peace out everybody